This is a quick little video about my latest project here that's putting an electric motor on a Santa Cruz VP. And a number of you out there were interested in builds. You were kind of thinking of maybe doing something similar if this all worked out. And so here it is. Now, to explain, I was a bit impatient by the time the stupid UPS finally got the motor to me. So I didn't set up all the video recording. I kind of got building right away. But I did take pictures along the way, and so I'll walk you through uh, some of the pictures and you should be able to understand the build reasonably well there. So I purchased the motor controller and supplies from Luna Cycle, per the recommendation from Jason Roth, who had lots of experience with this stuff. The bike itself was specifically purchased for this project, so I took a look at as many builds as I could find online, and really the choice of bike came down to three main things. It had to be reasonably cheap. This is a new experiment and I don't want to break the bank of course. Two, it had to be a solid and durable type of bike. I'm going to be bashing around on the trails and not wanting to worry about the bike itself. And it had to have a bottom bracket near the front of the frame so that the motor can sit more on the front of the bike than underneath the bike. Basically removing your clearance and risking bashing the motor on a rock if you have it on the bottom. Ten years ago, many of the downhill bikes had the bottom bracket in a perfect position for something like this. And one of the most popular of these was the Santa Cruz VPs or V10s. And they got great reviews for durability and providing a good ride. And now that they're 10 years old, they're pretty cheap. So I picked up this one for 750 bucks. It's bloody heavy, but I'll have motor assist, so all is good. So I started with removing the bottom bracket and attaching the motor, and that was pretty darn easy, and the instructions on the Luna site are very good, so won't belabor this. While I had the bike upside down, I figured I might as well deal with the battery mounting. Now this required a little more creativity, as I couldn't find a detailed solution that I was happy with, despite lots of searching. The Shark battery is heavy, and it needs good support. And I didn't like the backpack solution, and I wanted it to be mounted as low as possible, and the ideas about zip ties and Velcro bags, etc. didn't seem to be what I was looking for being out in the bush. So I started by adding rib nuts into the frame, uh, three for the aluminum part of the attachment and three for the plastic part where the standard holes were. Of course, you have to make your own holes in the aluminum plate, but those holes are the ones that are going to be the most durable ones, so you definitely should do that, I think. And bolt the aluminum piece in and then run the wires from the motor right into the bracket here. And I was going to just solder it directly, but there was lots of room here, so this should stay nice and tight with the connector inside here. So the battery is pretty tight up against the motor. I'm trying to keep its weight as low as possible on the bike. And the wiring went really easy. I didn't need any of the extra connections and extra wire that I'd bought just in case. And found that my bike had extra room on many of the housing brazens that were there. And so I was able to run the cables along the usual cable routes. And again, no extra wire needed. Everything fit perfectly on this frame. The shifter sensor went nicely on the right seat stay and again, running the extra cable back in the existing brazens. Once you start riding and shifting, you'll totally appreciate the shifter sensor. As I was pulling out the cable, it seemed like a good time to replace the cable and the housing, so an extra $15 for a nice clean addition. The controller fit nicely and I had to bundle some extra cables out in the front here. About the only thing that was annoying was the brake sensors are totally Mickey Mouse and didn't work for this bike. And I'm guessing that they don't work for a large percentage of the bikes out there. So I'll be sending those back. And that's pretty much it. I threw it on the trainer at this point. It was getting a bit heavy to swing around on the bike stand. And did the alignments and realized that I needed to put in a new chain as this sprocket was bigger than the old one. And that was that. I took it out for a rip and things felt pretty good. Played it around with it and learned how to get the pedal assist working. It's a good shock to the system while you're still in pedal assist number three and you stop and then you forget about it and barely start to pedal and get yanked forward, but still getting used to this. Had it up to about 50 kilometers per hour and a few little rattles and squeaks at these speeds, so I'm going to have to work on those. 
And as I bounced around on a few little trails, I wanted to feel more comfortable about abusing it in the future, and the only thing that still made me nervous was the darn battery. It's already bolted to the frame using the rivnuts, remember, but it's really heavy, and if there's a way to provide a little bit extra support, I'd be happier. So I went to Princess Auto and grabbed some large hose clamps, and to protect the battery, I grabbed a couple of long bungee cords and cut the ends off, and voila, now I could throw this thing off a cliff and the battery would still be attached to the frame, so I'm happy going forward with this. Now, I threw a few bike pouches on for tools and phone and such, and it's ready to go. Next steps, uh, find the source of the little rattles and squeaks. It's a pretty darn quiet motor, so the little noises are quite annoying. Gonna have to figure those out. And also, totally interested in doing some comparisons. I'm curious on how this Frankenstein will compare with the commercial bikes. Uh, Guy's Volt and Brad and Karen's Levos. More of an academic curiosity than simply a race or anything. I had a lot of fun building this thing, but not sure if somebody who just wanted a good solid bike should go this route or pay a little bit more for a commercial one. And perhaps we'll all come to a conclusion and comment below. Feel free to add your thoughts on this below.